Greetings, urban farmers, gardeners, and healthy food visionaries. Farmer Greg here, and welcome to the 496th episode of the Urban Farm Podcast, where every day we work together to educate and inspire you to become part of your food revolution. Hello, everyone. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about how we make the Urban Farm Podcast come to life. My team and I pour our time, hearts, and dollars into every episode to bring you food growing education and inspiration every week, and we love doing it. I see firsthand how food growing changes people's lives for the better, and I've made it my mission to spread the knowledge far and wide. By creating this podcast, I have the great privilege of interviewing some absolutely amazing people and providing a platform for you to learn from their experiences and expertise. The impact that this work has on the global food consciousness community is extraordinary. This is all thanks to my team and their efforts, five of us that work every week to find guests, set up interviews, write out questions, prepare show notes, edit episodes, and more. We've tried partnering with companies and running ads to pay for our work, but something about the ad model just doesn't feel right to me. If I'm advocating for something, I want it to be something I truly love and believe in. So I've decided to try a different model, one that I believe is possible to pay our team and bring even more value while keeping the podcast free and accessible to everyone. So instead of selling ads, we have created the Urban Farm Podcast Patron Program. If you find value in our podcast, you can go even deeper by becoming a member of our patron community. In exchange for subscribing, you will receive content and bonuses far beyond the free podcast episodes we offer. No matter what level you subscribe at, I'm committed to making sure the value you receive goes far beyond what you contribute. Did you know that the Urban Farm podcast is not my first? Over a decade ago, my friend Amy and I hosted the Freshly Green podcast, 50 episodes of Everything Green. As an Urban Farm podcast patron, you will get access to them, plus cool things such as discounts on Urban Farm U online courses and access to our private Facebook community where you can interact with other food growers and share stories and advice. My favorite offering for our patrons is our monthly Q&As with Urban Farm U's Advanced Gardener Team, where we answer your questions live. It's basically having your own private gardener at your fingertips. I'm excited for the mutual exchange that comes from this model. And when you support the Urban Farm Podcast, we support you to take your garden to the next level and beyond. The Urban Farm Podcast will remain free. And I hope that those of you that believe in what we're doing and are excited by our patron benefits will take advantage of what we're offering. I truly believe this model of support will be a win-win all around. For more details about member benefits and to sign up to pledge your support, go to urbanfarmpodcast.org. Thanks for sticking with me through this message. Now let's get to the episode. Today on our podcast, we have someone who makes growing healthy food at home fast, easy, and fun. We're talking with Jacob Pachenik about homegrown salads, veggies, herbs, and more. Jacob is a passionate entrepreneur who has built a career around questioning and improving industry status quo. After graduating from MIT with a BS in chemical engineering, he founded and led an early web-based business-to-business supply chain platform, a peer-to-peer derivatives trading platform, and a film finance and production company with over 30 film credits. When expecting his first child, he became acutely aware of the limitations of our food system and was inspired to look into solutions. This passion led him to create The Farm Project, a public benefit corporation whose mission is to transform our food system by engaging and empowering consumers. The Farm Project launched the hit web series, Your Food's Roots, in partnership with ATTN in 2017. And in the spring of 2019, the company launched Let Us Grow, an initiative that empowers everyone to grow 20% of their own food. Welcome to the show today, Jacob. Are you ready to rock your food roots? Let's do it. Excellent. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at today? Sure. I think uh, think the biggest thing 
in the recent years is really the transition of uh, becoming a parent. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. When my wife and I were pregnant with the four-year-old, I just started to look at the food that she was eating, and I felt like you needed like a research department to interpret the labels, <laughs> right? What was, what was in everything, and that just got me to pondering, you know, why is food as nature intended it so expensive and so out of reach to most of us, whereas this processed manufactured foods are so readily available. And that, I, you know, at the time I was in the film business and was financing and producing films, and I just saw this issue as being so important that I really, like, almost quit that cold turkey and jumped into exploring food. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'd been really a software guy or finance most of my life, and I knew I needed to learn about farming, I think, or the, the thought process was at the time that I needed to learn about farming. And I met a couple guys that wanted to build an aquaponics farm in Texas, and I thought that would be a great start and that I could help them with my business know-how and they could help teach me about farming. And we created, I think, the first organically certified aquaponics farm in Texas. Wow. We'd actually taken over a failed farm and we thought that we would be able you know, to turn it around. And, and, and in part of that, we got that certified organic and we ramped it up. We were you know, selling about 20,000 heads of lettuce a month, not just lettuce, but all leafy greens, but it was mostly to restaurants and mostly high-end restaurants. And But it really didn't satisfy our mission. My mission was really to help everybody have access to, you know, organic, high-quality produce. And so when we started looking at distributing to the people and through grocery stores, that's when I really had a wake-up call, was that, our supply chain doesn't really deliver. It hasn't been designed to deliver fresh food. It's really designed around the processed, shelf-stabilized foods that store well. And for us to actually deliver our product to the people, it would have to be corrupted in some way, either by us or, or show up corrupted. And I saw that, you know, 52% of food, you know, went bad before anyone ever ate it. And part of that is the 1500 mile journey or the, you know, the 10 days it takes to get from the farm to the store. And the thought process was that if we could take that waste out, we could have the cost of fresh food for the people and we could double the price that farmers get. And that's what really led me to start the farm project. And what is the farm project? So the Farm Project is a public benefit corp that was set up to build a better food system and to reconnect people with their food, reconnect communities with their food, and empower consumers to have a voice and an opinion where their food comes from. And so we go about that. We You mentioned the web series. We, we started a series called Your Food's Roots. It's on Facebook. And we explore different parts of our food system. And we talk about them in, I don't know, two to four minute bite size segments. And we tell consumers that they have a choice and what the ramifications are that. And it's generally all positive. There's nothing doom and gloom. It's really, here's what you can do. And then the second focus is Let Us Grow. And so Let Us Grow is an initiative of the Farm Project, and that's our tangible initiative to get people growing their own food, that we feel that if people are growing their own food, they'll feel empowered to have a, that their opinion matters, that their opinion is valid, and that they then go around as enlightened consumers and they sort of vote with their dollars and that their dollars drive investment in the right in the food system that we that we need. So Lettuce Grow has a very unique product that you sell that empowers people to grow their own food. Can you tell us about it? It's really a product and a new system. The concept is that you know we want to make it, you know, fun and easy and totally uncomplicated to grow your own food, make growing fit within sort of the modern constraints, no time, no space, 
no knowledge, you know, or no time to go and research what will grow. So what we do, we have a network of urban farms and you tell us what you would like to grow and we'll know based on your zip code exactly what's the right variety to grow for you and when to grow it. And we germinate the plants and we make sure that the plants, we call them seedlings, get to about two to three weeks where they're very strong. And then we put them in a box and we send them to you over generally a very short distance. And you take them out of the box and you plug them into a farm stand. You could also, you could put these seedlings into a raised bed or you could put them into a tower garden or another hydroponic device. But we have our own product that we just launched in May called a farm stand. And it's a, uh, it's a hydroponic growing device. It's made out of ocean bound plastic. We recover milk jugs from, from Haiti. These are jugs that would have make it into the ocean if they weren't collected. And we put them through a process where they are cleaned. We ensure they're food grade. And we, they also meet a California Prop 65 standards, which basically says there's no, there's nothing known by the state that will leach out of, out of the product. It's like extremely clean. And the farm stand grows using 95% less water than conventional growing, and it's self-watering and self-fertilizing. And then the third part of our... Let me, before, you, before you go past that, mm-hmm. I just want to do a shout out. If you go to lettucegrow.com and just scroll down the page a little bit, there's a video of a young lady getting her tower and setting it up and growing things in it. It's a really good about three-minute video. Who, who was that? That was a woman who works with uh, Attention Media, who is a partner of ours with the Facebook Watch series. And she was totally new to growing. She didn't know, you know anything about our product or really growing. And we just set her up and see, you know, we, we, it was like a 30 or 40 day program where she recorded a little bit every day. And then they put the video together. Nice. It's pretty, pretty cool to see. Her progress. Yeah, exactly. And so before we go on, you, you started to say number three, but before we go on to that, for this product that you have to grow food in, what do you call it? A farm stand. A farm stand. For your farm stand, stand back 10 feet and look at it and tell our listeners, give our listeners a picture of what they're looking at and how it works. Because it is fascinating. I love this concept. Well, thank you. I think 10 feet back, it almost looks like a, like a lava lamp of sorts or like a genie type of, uh, there's like a genie top type of base. The base holds 20 and a half gallons of water. And then there's levels and it's stackable. So you can go anywhere from two to six levels and each level holds six plants. So our smallest one, we call it the teeny, is 12 plants, and the largest is the large. Very creative names. The large has 36 plants and is about six feet tall. The large yields about the same amount of produce that 45 square feet of raised beds would yield. Wow. And it's all on a two-by-two two footprint. So it's kind of like when it's grown out, it kind of looks like a Christmas tree with vegetables on it. That's one way to say it. Exactly. Nice. And what can you grow in it? So right now we're doing over 200 varieties. It's really like all the herbs you can imagine. You know, at, at the moment we have like six different types of basil, parsley, oregano, sage, cilantro, and then leafy greens. We've got, I think, six different lettuces, various leafy green mixes, spinach, Swiss chard, the Asian greens like, you know, bok choy, tak soy. And then on the vegetable side, got broccoli, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. We're doing like a ground cherry right now, which is in the tomatillo family. I never even knew it existed. It's pretty cool. We do beans, peas. On the fruit side, we do strawberries, even watermelon, which just blows my mind every time I see a watermelon grow out. And then you have cucumber, squash, zucchini. It's really almost anything that's not a tree or a bush. We even do like little carrots, daikon, like our mini daikon radishes, some beets. So wow. it's a pretty versatile device. 
we spent you know, a couple of years on the R and D side, not just on how it works, but also the the industrial design, how it looks yeah. and how it sounds. It does make a very pleasant, like fountain-like sound when it's running, like a fountain. Exactly, and it uses you know less power than a light bulb, so we're talking like fifty cents a month or less. Perfect. So the water's in the bottom. It holds twenty gallons. I'm assuming you put some kind of nutrient in the water. There's a pump in there. It pumps the water up the tower, and it kind of cascades down the tower in the center and grows the plants. Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. When the timer goes on, the water's pumped to the top. It rains down, and just the right amount of water and nutrients are delivered to the root of the plant. And if you pull any of the plants out, you can see the water running, and you can see exactly where it hit the roots, and you can also see all the roots dangling out. And it's fantastic for kids because they get to see how nature works. And every day you will see more, you know, longer roots. So it's hard to get bored watching these plants grow. I suspect to a certain extent they'll grow faster in there too, won't they? They do. So they grow about 30% faster than growing in the ground. But also your turnover and your harvest time is much faster. It's more than two times faster than if you're doing a raised bed. And that's because we're growing the plants for the first two to three weeks for you. All so right. we start them, you finish them. So you, in the summer, you may only need about two and a half weeks to get a full harvest. In the winter, it might be four weeks. It all depends on the variety. There's some other benefits to the fact that we're growing with water because water is a great buffer, a temperature buffer. So we're able to grow in very warm climates in the hottest parts of the summer, like in Texas in August, because there is an evaporative cooling effect that occurs as the water drops inside of the farm stand. And so we could keep the roots about 10 degrees cooler than the leaves of the plant. And it really matters more the temperature of the roots. And then in the winter, we can extend the growing season as well. We're in places like Texas where maybe during the day you're in the 40s to 60s, but overnight you might drop the 20s. You can put a simple aquarium heater in the tank, raise the water temperature and prevent it from overnight freeze and you can grow completely through through the winter. That doesn't work for Northeast like Minnesota or the North or Northeast, but uh, it does work in the Sunbelt states very well. well. And here in Phoenix, we're in low desert and I suspect there'd be a little bit of a shift in that because our best growing time is from about October 1st to May 1st. And in the summertime, it gets brutally hot here. So I suspect there's a little bit of a shift there that would happen. Definitely. And it's, it's all about sending you the right varieties that are heat tolerant oh, yes. and exclude, excluding the things that, that aren't going to do well. Awesome. And so that's a lot of the work that we do, you know, getting into, when I started that farm in Texas, I was just thankful that my partners knew a lot. But when we went to start our fields, because we, we mostly grew in greenhouses, but we also grew in the ground, we didn't really know what would grow best. We didn't know what would grow best for the the type of land we had and for the climate. And we had to go to the library or find like this older farmer down the street and ask what he grew. And, you know, one of the concerns I had is, you know, a hundred years ago, 70% of us were growing our own food. Right. And we had this knowledge. It was like an inheritance that was passed down. And now it's what, like less than 1% of people in this country grow their own and this information is just disappearing. And so what we're trying to do is really regather this information and rather than make it so that everyone who's growing has to learn it, we'll figure it out. And so when you say what you want to grow, we'll figure out, okay, what's the, what's the right variety, right? And when, when should you be growing it? And what's the best way to germinate it? And we take care of all that. So you just focus on, you know, on, on growing something that is pretty much guaranteed to work. So how does this growing at home concept change the playing field for people on my street? Some, 
people will grow all of their own food, but our goal is really to help people grow about 20% of their own food. And so for that 20%, we will provide a much tastier product, right? There's also no chemicals. There's there's nothing harmful on the product. And it's this great experience that really connects you to growing. And what it does is it informs you, I believe, on where you're going to make the other 80% of your your food choices. So I think that where, you know, the, the people on your street will, you know, enjoy the produce, but then will seek out the farmers in your neighborhood or in your community and want to learn more about how those farmers grow their food and, you know, start to make more, you know, better informed decisions. It really just starts the process of them thinking about where their food comes from. I think there's a magic to growing. You know, we tend to live very disconnected lives and food grown, it's out of sight, out of mind. I used to, you know, I I live in LA now, but I lived in Texas for a long time and barbecue was such a huge thing and there's always long lines. And I just imagine, what if somebody walked a cow by every two hours? Uh, uh, So they realize this is coming from somewhere. Right. You know, would that change our consumption habits? Or if a chemical truck pulled up at your neighbor's house, right, that was growing food, you'd go across the street and you'd say, hey, what's going on over there? Right. But all this stuff is happening. We're just sort of close our eyes to it. And I think growing your own food at home, when you see it's actually not that hard, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes to make that first leap, but it's not that hard. And it's in our DNA, too. I mean, we've been doing it for a million years. We just haven't done it in the last 150. And, and we're supposed to care about what we put in our body and what we put, you know, what we do to the earth. And this is a little magical experience that sort of like reactivates that, you know, that part of our DNA that sort of makes us aware, makes us care, and makes us, you know, act with intention. Yeah. You are focusing on new and wannabe farmers and gardeners. Tell me about that process. We're focused on everyone. You know, we're focused on people who eat food. (laughs) If you eat food and you care about what you eat, then we focus on you. And I think that's 100% of people. I haven't yet spoken to someone about what we're doing. They say, you know, I'm not really interested to talk to, you know, someone else. Yeah. I think people who are avid gardeners or growers already, they get it very quickly, right, of of the, the power of this model. Yeah, And the people who haven't ever grown, they're very intrigued, but sometimes they still think, oh, growing is going to be really complicated, or this is for my friend, this is for Farmer Greg, because he already knows how to do all this stuff. He loved it. And we have, our job to do is, no, imagine yourself in this scenario. It's not that, it's not that tough. And that's sort of like, maybe that's a good lead into the number three, which I didn't get to, of our system. You know, one was us creating the seedlings, two is the farm stand, but three is a help desk. So when you sign up and you start growing with us, every week we tell you exactly what to do. We'll remind you to add water. We'll tell you exactly how much nutrients to add because we know what you're growing and what the metabolic needs are of those plants. We'll tell you like fun facts on each plant, show you what it looks like in various stages tell you when to harvest it, how to prune it, and then recipes, how to make it tasty and how to make it tasty quickly or how to make it so your kids are going to enjoy it. Because it's not, we're not doing this just to grow food. It's really a means to an end and the end is healthier eating and healthier, you know, healthier lives. And part of that app as well is kind of called like Shazam for plants. You know, everything we do is recycled and fully recyclable, and we don't like to use any single-use plastics. And one of the big questions we were getting early on is, I don't really know what plants I'm growing. Can you put this little plastic thing in there with a label? We're like, you know, I don't really want to do that. Let's think of some other options. And we came up with uh, Shazam for plants. So you could actually just scan or take a picture of any of the plants that you're growing. And we use machine learning and artificial intelligence to actually recognize that plant and tell you exactly what it is. The wow. next step, and so you can download that app at the on the Apple, you know, App Store. Mm-hmm. It's uh, called Let Us Grow. The next step with that would also be able to 
identify deficiencies in plants or any type of issue, any pest or deficiency. And what we will, we're not doing it just yet, but because we need to still do some more development work on it, but we will be releasing this app to everyone, whether you're a grower with us or not, because our mission is to help everyone grow their own food. And sometimes people just need that the person that they can call or that help desk they, they can use. And we will be, you know, giving that support to everyone. Wow. Nice. You're running your organization, The Farm Project, and you decipher that there is a need for a better way to get people motivated to grow their own food. How did you come up with this concept, The Farm Stand? Back right before starting The Farm Project, I was in Austin on the aquaponics farm, and I would invite people over for a tour. And I would say... All the tours were scheduled for about half an hour, and almost everyone stayed for an hour. And it was just this magical experience. And I think getting people onto a farm really made a big impact and just opening people's eyes and almost changing some of their eating habits right on the spot. And then I moved to L.A., and I was far from the farm still talking to the guys on the phone every day, you know, for hours, but I wasn't on the land. And if you live in L.A., you'll know it it takes like three hours to get to any type of farm. So, you know, like I wasn't going to do that. And I was thinking, like, how do you, you know, how do you create that connection? And even in the house that we had purchased, we had cleared out half of the yard to make way for raised beds. And the, you know, we we went to like, I think it's like a hard pack and we were going to build the beds on top. and. I think it was like 12 months later, it was still hard pack and no raised beds on top. It was just such an overwhelming thing. And then a buddy of mine introduced me to Tower Garden and I purchased a Tower Garden. And then I met someone else who was growing seedlings for them because if you purchase a Tower Garden, generally you have to, you know, it's just the hardware and you have to actually figure out how you're going to you know, germ, you know, how are you going to pick what you're going to grow and buy the seeds and germinate them and, and everything. And that again was overwhelming to me. So I found someone who was servicing them. And so this guy would come to my yard every week. I talked to him and the price point was like pretty high. And I was thinking, wow, it's not what I had imagined really in organic farming, but it had created that magic again for me right away. And it had created, at this point, I had two, I had one kid and just seeing my, and I think my daughter was maybe one or two at the time, just seeing her interact, I saw, wow, you know, you don't need to just have like this soil-based, like the, you know, the more iconic type of garden, almost any, any way that you could sort of fit growing into your, you know, modern life is good. That's really where the idea came from. It's like, how do we make this more accessible, more affordable, more foolproof, you know, guaranteed? And that's where I applied a lot of my background, you know, on the software side and the supply chain side and try to take this like very unpredictable, unreliable thing called, you know, growing and gardening and put in use more information technology rather than chemical technology to make it more predictable. Nice. And one of the things that I've noticed throughout our conversation is something that you and I have in common. And that's that for me, everything is education first. How can I teach somebody how to do it better. I do gardening classes here in town. I teach people about fruit trees. I teach people about seeds. And that's first and foremost is to get them educated. And I see you're doing the same thing. Yeah, we are. The main way I think we're, I mean, we we are doing this for every one of our growers, but for every 10 farm stands we sell, we give one away to a school because it's very important for us to educate our next generation. And I had mentioned the, you know, the, the DNA of it, but when you see little kids interacting with growing, you know, with, with plants, with vegetables, you can easily see like we're built to do this. You know, this is, this is in our nature. 
and we, you know, again, want to reactivate that. And the farm stays is very cool because I mentioned you could pull out the plants, you can look at the roots, you can see them grow, you can look at, you know, they do attract a whole ecosystem, they attract butterflies, hummingbirds, you know, bees. And then the equipment is so friendly to work with, you could take the whole thing apart in less than five minutes. You know, one of, like, I could take it apart in, in one minute. And you could take it apart and put it back together. These go in the car all the time because we take them to farmer's markets. We take them, you know, all over the place. They have, like, a lot of frequent flyer miles to them. <laughs> nice. But it, it's all about, it's discovering, you know, all of the above, the, the growing everything, to, you know, the growing of the plants to the engineering of the product and, you know, how it fits together. Beautiful. So, I'm going to shift on you, and I'd like for you to talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure, and what you learned from it. Yeah, well, I think what we're talking about now is is the result of a failure. I and I hate using that word failure because I see all of these things. You know, it's lessons learned, and if you you know, each failure is really an education, and you just got to look at that way and see what you what you take from it, but. The farm that I discussed in Austin, Texas, you know, we put a lot of, you know, blood, sweat, and tears in it. My two partners were really working hard, and I I was working hard as well and putting a lot of financing into it. And I had realized at one point that this farm was really never going to work, and other farms like it wouldn't work because of the, the food system and how we distribute our product in that, you know, that this, you know, in this country, our, our system is designed around food that travels thousands of miles and not fresh food. And that's where I did a turn and say, okay, well, this isn't going to work, but it should work. So we're going to have to change the system and make it work better. So that was through, that's where the farm project came from. And the idea was to connect with consumers. So they demand this type of product and also through Let Us Grow is provide the access. Excellent. And what would you consider your biggest success? I would say that my kids are my biggest success. They're still a work in progress, but they're also why I'm doing everything that I do. For a long time, I was motivated thinking, what kind of world are we going to leave for them? And what do I need to do to, to help improve that world? But now it's really focused on what kind of kids do we need to nurture so that they take care of the world. It's really in their hands, and and that's where I put all my focus on to um, raising those two special kids. Nice, nice, and I, you know, people often ask me why I do what I do. It's education based, but I'm doing it for the kids, and I don't even have any kids. I've never had kids. I'm not going to have them. And I'm doing them for I'm doing this for your kids and for everybody out there that's listening, their kids, so that we do leave them a place that they can actually get good, healthy food. So I totally hear you on that. So what drives you? I would say just uplifting humanity, doing my part to make things better, seeing things that don't make sense that aren't in everyone's interest, and coming up with solutions that are going to make a real impact. Nice. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be and why? I would recommend the book that I'm currently listening to called Alchemy by Rory Sutherland. I'm listening to on Audible, which is fascinating. And basically, you know, talks about how humans aren't purely rational. I mean, we are very irrational and that we can't really project success on an accounting spreadsheet that we need to think differently and move past superficial analysis of things. That if we just think about models to project what's going to work, we're going to be very boring and we're going to miss a lot of things and we're going to miss the magic. And it's really interesting to me because I think there's this magic in growing. It's not just about the ROI of growing your food at home versus driving and going to the grocery store and getting it. There's so much more to it. There's this like almost like a spiritual connectedness to it. And that's priceless. And there's a lot of things in life like that. So the book makes you think about it. 
Beautiful. And what one final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? I'd say follow your heart and start before you're ready. (laughs) I like that. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Jacob. Thank you for having me. I really enjoy it. And I enjoy everything that you're doing with your podcast and educating children. And I'm honored to be part of it. Well, thank you. And how can our listeners find you and get a uh, farm stand and like that? Here you can go to lettucegrow.com. And lettuce is spelled like a head of lettuce, L-E-T-T-U-C-E grow.com. You can also email us at hello at lettucegrow.com. Perfect. And you've got a special offer for our listeners. Can you tell us about that? We do. We have a code. So if you're interested in a, in a farm stand, we are offering $75 off to the first 50 growers. And that code can be applied at checkout. It's FarmerGreg75. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Go, everybody go out and check out the website. And, you know, I love this way of growing. I have a third of an acre, and I also have a tower garden that I bought years ago. And it's a magical way of growing. I still use my tower garden every season. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. You can find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org forward slash let us grow. Hey, if you've enjoyed this podcast and are interested in listening to my first podcast series, Freshly Green from 2007, you can subscribe to support the Urban Farm podcast. With that, you will have access to Freshly Green and so much more bonus content. Visit urbanfarmpodcast.org to find out more and to pledge your support. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.